What is rocking everybody? Jerk Turtle back and today is a special day because we did it. We surpassed 50 subscribers and like I promised if we hit 50 then I would do a special live performance reaction and that's what we're gonna do. We are doing Iron Maiden Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Okay this was requested by Dark Helmet and Defiance and India Moni La Chupa Verga Super Dotata. That's quite a name. It's obviously a very popular song, so I figured why not do something cool for our 50 subscriber special. Thank you guys, you're amazing, you rock. I love you all. Keep it up. Um, I hope you enjoy this. I know I'm going to enjoy this because I have loved every single Iron Maiden song I've heard so far, and I'm excited to check this out. So without further ado, Let's hit the seas and rock out. Cheers, guys, and thank you. I'm going to try not to pause this so much so we can enjoy this, but let's get going. As you, uh, as you might know, we've got a new album wandering around at the moment. Bruce Dickinson. The album is called Power Slave, all right? What we thought we'd do on this one, rather than write the usual, you know what I mean, three and a half minute hit single and all that stuff and get on uh, all the usual bullshit time of uh, shows and all the rest of it, what we thought we'd do is we'd do something a little different. We did a song on this album that's about 13 minutes long, right? It's a little track we're going to do for you. Written by a guy a very long time ago, a guy by the name of Samuel Taylor Coleridge actually wrote a poem on which this song is based, all right? All right, so this is obviously based on the poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And before we begin, I'll be right back. I'm going to do some research. All right, so after my research, it looks like The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner is a poem about a mariner and his crew aboard a ship which sails down south to, like, the South Pole where they become sort of stranded in the fog and the cold and the wind. And an albatross shows up, a large bird that's flying around the ship. The crew thinks it's a sign from God, but the mariner doesn't think so, and he kills it. Uh, but then the fog and the wind and the cold lift, and they're able to get out of there, so they think the mariner did a good thing. Then they get stranded again, and the crew thinks this is because he killed the albatross, so they hang it around his neck as a sign of shame. As they float in the water, without fresh water to drink, they all start dying of thirst and everything else. They come across a ship. They all think the ship is their salvation, but it is a death ship, a ghostly death ship. And the crew of the death ship is like death and life after death. And they gamble to win the lives of the crew, which they do win. And all the crew members start dying one by one of thirst. And the mariner is forced to watch this. He then sees some snakes outside of the ship, which he sees as a sign from God an inspiration um, and the albatross falls from his neck and he is no longer shamed that is my brief synopsis there's probably a lot more to that poem but I just want to get the general feel of the poem since this is what they are basing the song off of obviously so without further ado let's get back in and start rocking and this poem this poem I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say was written while under the influence of drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no, it's not drugs. Now we're not talking here the kind of drugs that I normally take, which is maybe the odd cup of tea or something like that, you know, before a concert or something. <laughs> we're talking serious drugs. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about marijuana. Oh man, no. Not marijuana. <laughs> Do you know this stuff used to be legal in the 19th century in England, all right? In those days, they didn't used to call it marijuana, they used to call it hemp, right? Which is the stuff they used to make ropes out of in those days. And did you know that the Queen of England, that's Queen Victoria, who was the Queen of England in those days, she used to get really, really bad period pains, you know what I mean? Really terrible. And in her diary, she used to write, had really terrible period pains today. Georgie was very annoyed. That was her husband, the king, you know what I mean? And she used to go to the toilet and have a couple of joints to kind of uh, mellow out a little bit. Did you know that? That's crazy. I like our little history lesson by Bruce Dickinson. 
I did not know the Queen of England used to smoke pot, but that's very funny. Alright, I'm liking this. I'm liking this little sit-down history lesson. Really? And now look what's happened to the state of the fucking empire. Never mind. The rhyme of the ancient Meridor! If you dare. <laughs> Oh, singing is so good. going nuts this whole song. Oh. It's 
cool being able to see these guys live finally. stranded on the water as the ghost ship approaches. We can hear the creaking of the boards. This is awesome guys. I love this. Those are lines from the actual pole. So eerie. They got the fog rolling across the stage. Seeing Iron Maiden live is probably freaking amazing. I know some of you guys have told me, but if you've seen them live, let me know. Let me know how it was.
base is still going up. Whoa. What's he doing? He's just smacking those symbols. beautiful beautiful all right as you can see i'm sweating my ass off um that was freaking amazing oh where to begin epic if i had to sum this up in one word it would be epic um bruce dickinson's voice is so passionate so amazing he's got to be like i said he's got to be one of the best lead singers in metal history um just the way you can hit those notes and the power behind them. Steve Harris going nuts that entire song. Like, his riffs were insane. Drummer going crazy. Um, that whole middle section was just eerie and creepy. It really gave you the feeling of floating out on an open sea, no help around, and just a weird, creepy, eerie ship coming at you out of the mist. And then it transitions back, and all the transitions in the song were amazing. I really, really, really like the song. This was great. Um, I'm going to have to check out the studio version now, just because. But it was really cool seeing them live, and uh, really dope song. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Uh, keep it up. I love it. And until next time, keep rocking.